So today we're going to learn how to use a jQuery plugin called Validate for performing form validation. As I mentioned, this plugin is written by one of the engineers from the jQuery UI team, and it's very popular. And it's free. And so this is the website. I have posted the link to it on the week 10. And as always, when we work with a plugin, our first step would be to get familiar with the documentation and many demos that I have. So it has a little video here. Let's see how many. It's 12 minutes. It's probably worth showing you the video at this point. So I'm going to show you this video. If we have sound. Well. Validation data. Here we go. Okay. Now it's, it's out. So. Hi, this is now with WebEducator. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started validating forms with jQuery Validation Plugin, which is available at jQueryValidation.org. I'll be showing you how to use jQuery Validation Plugin with two different forms, a very simple common form, and then a somewhat more complex sign-up form. Then I'll show you how to find additional validation methods and to create your own. And finally, I'll show you how you can localize your messages. Let's start with a simple common form. You'd see it has four fields, name, email, URL, and a common field. The name is required, and it must be at least two characters long. The email is also required, and it must be a valid email. The URL is optional, but if you enter one, it must be a valid URL and a common is required. Let's just submit it without entering anything. You can see we get three errors for the three required fields. Okay, let's enter some data. Okay, so we filled in data for the three required fields. Now if we submit, the form submits. Let's go back, and this time we'll fill in all fields but the email and URL will be invalid. Notice that as soon as we entered invalid data, we got error messages. Now, if I go to name, which remember must be two characters, and make it just one character and tab out, you can see I get an error message there as well. I'm going to refresh. This time I put the cursor in the name field, but I won't enter any data. I'll just go to the next field. Notice how it did not give me an error. Now I'll enter data, tab out, tab back, delete the data, and notice that as soon as it becomes invalid, I get an error message. So the validation code is checking to see if I've tried to enter anything. If I haven't yet tried, then it's not going to give me an error message. But if I've tried, and then the data somehow becomes invalid, it will give me an error message. Watch with the email. That's valid, so no error message. I'm going to go back, and as soon as the email becomes invalid, I get an error message. Now it's okay. Same thing with the URL. Invalid. It wants the HTTP. Now it's valid. If I go back and remove the HTTP, I get the error message until I make it valid. Very nice. If I submit, it tells me where all my errors are. When I correct those errors, I can submit. Okay, let's go take a look at the code. So here's the code for our common form. You can see it has two style sheets for formatting and then two script tags. The first script tag just brings in jQuery and the second script tag brings in our jQuery validation plugin. Let's scroll down and look at the HTML form. You can see it has our four fields, the name field, the email field, the URL field, and the common field. The name, email, and common field are all required. And the name has a min length 
set to two. Notice that the email field type is email and the URL field type is URL. The code will key off those to make sure the user enters a valid email and a valid URL. Let's scroll down. And you can see here we call validate on the comment form. That combined with the special attributes in the form fields is what does all the magic. Very simple. Now let's take a look at a form that's a little more complex. It has some of the same features as our other form, some required fields and an email, but it also has some new things, a username, a password and a confirmed password, and then it has a couple check boxes. I'll go ahead and submit without filling it out. And you can see we get our errors. Notice though that the errors are customized. Please enter your first name, please enter your last name, and so on. Only the email error is generic. This field is required. I'll go ahead and fill the format now. And you can see the errors go away. And this is a cool little feature added using jQuery where we suggest the username based on the first name and last name. I'll keep that username. I'll enter a password. And now I need to confirm that password. And then I need to enter an email. Notice the error changes. Now it says, please enter a valid email address. I will. I'll agree to the policy. And then I would like to receive the newsletter. And as soon as I do that, I get some more options. Watch if I just check one of them and submit. I get an error saying, please select at least two topics. I'll select another. The error goes away. I can submit and it submits successfully. Let's go take a look at the code. Here's the HTML document. The head is pretty much the same as in the comment form. The only difference is that we have this new script tag bringing in signupform.js. We'll take a look at that in a minute. First, let's look at the HTML form. Again, this is very similar to the comment form. One thing to notice is that the input fields do not have a required attribute. We'll use JavaScript to set that property. It has a password and a confirmed password field. It has an email field, and that does have type set to email. And then it has a checkbox named agree. You'll see in the JavaScript that will force the user to check that box. And then it has a newsletter checkbox. That's optional, but if the user checks it, this field set below called newsletter topics will come into view. Initially, it will be hidden. The user will then have to select at least two of those topics. And we'll take a look at the JavaScript to see how we enforce that. Let's go to signupform.js. Whereas in the common form, we call the validate method on the common form right in the HTML page. Here we're doing it within the JavaScript using the ready method of the document object. You can see when the document is ready, we call the validate method of the signup form. We pass that validate method a couple of properties. One is a rules object, and the other is a messages object. We use the rules object to set the validation rules. You can see we set first name and last name to required. Username is also set to required, but it's done a little differently. Instead of just setting it to a string required, we set username to an object. And one of the properties of that object is required true. We use another property, minLane, to make the user enter at least two characters for their username. We do the same thing with password, except min length is five in this case. And we do it with confirm password as well. But confirm password has another property, equal to. And you can see that it's equal to, in quotes, pound password. That will ensure that the user confirms the password correctly. We set two properties in the email object. Required is true and email is true. That forces the user to enter a value, which must be a valid email address. For topic, we are only going to require that if the newsletter is checked. You see how the jQuery validation plugin provides a neat way of doing this. We just do pound newsletter colon check as the value for required instead of true. So if the newsletter checkbox is checked, that will force the user to enter at least two topics. That's where the min length comes in, min length colon two. And lastly, we make the agree checkbox required. The messages are just custom messages we enter. First name and last name are just please enter your first name, please enter your last name. The username messages will be different depending on what the error is. If they didn't enter anything, it will say please enter a username. If they entered something, but it's not long enough, 
it'll say your username must consist of at least two characters. Same thing with the password. And the confirm password has a third property equal to. If they retype the password incorrectly, they'll get an error saying, please enter the same password as above. For agree and topic, we also have custom messages. Notice that there is no custom message for email. And that's why it falls back on a generic message we saw when we filled out the form. This little bit of code runs as soon as the user focuses on the username field. All it does is get the first name and last name value and then concatenates them with the period in between and sets the result to this dot value, the value of the username field. And the last thing we do is handle the newsletter. In line 61, we just create a variable called newsletter, which contains the newsletter field. And then in line 63, we set a variable called initial, which will evaluate to true or false depending on whether the newsletter checkbox is checked. In line 64, we either add or remove the high class from newsletter topics based on whether or not initial is true. In line 65, we disable the inputs if initial is false. And finally, starting in line 67, we toggle the visibility of topics based on whether the newsletter checkbox is checked. We've only seen a few of the validation methods provided by the jQuery validation plugin. Check out the documentation page for all the validation methods available. There are also a bunch of additional validation methods available at the URL shown here. For example, if you want to be able to enforce that a field is alphanumeric, you can download the alphanumeric.js file here and add it to your code. It's as easy as that. Even cooler, you can add your own methods. The documentation is at the URL shown here, but I'll show you an example now. The validator object has a method called add method, which takes two required arguments and one optional argument. The first required argument is the name. In this case, we're naming our method WebCater email. The second required argument is the function that will run to check whether or not the field is valid, and it will return true or false. And the third optional argument is the error message to display in the event of an error. You can see here, our name is WebEcator email. Our function will return true if this element is optional or if the value entered ends in WebEcator.com. The error message that we will display if the function returns false is only WebEcator.com email addresses are allowed. Now, if we scroll up to our email, instead of setting email to true, we'll set WebEcator email to true. Now, when we run this in the browser, we submit without filling it out, we still get this field is required for the email. But if we enter an email address that doesn't end in webucator.com, you see we get only webucator.com email addresses are allowed. <coughs> there, when the email ends in webucator.com, the error goes away. So you can see it's quite simple to add your own methods for any specific validations you might want to have. The last thing I want to show you is how you can easily add localized error messages. You get the localization files at the URL shown here. I've grabbed the Spanish one, and I'll show you how to add it to the common form so that the errors appear in Spanish. You can see the extra script tag that brings in messages underscore es.js. That brings in our Spanish localization, and that's all there is to it. Watch what happens when I run the code in the browser. I'll just submit without filling anything out. And you can see all the errors are now in Spanish. You can't get any easier than that. Okay, that's all for this video. There's more to the jQuery validation plugin than I've shown you. So I encourage you to go and get it at jQueryvalidation.org and play around with it yourself. Enjoy. We'll do just that. We'll play around with it. What did you think of the video? Powerful. Powerful? Yeah. Pretty powerful too. I mean, I guess in studio like his form yeah. validation. <laughs> so let's see what we're going to mention here. Okay, so we're going to do an example in class that is going to focus on the more basic validation. And what I want to point out is that um, you have to remember that you're also doing server-side validation, so your client-side doesn't have to be perfect. It can be good enough. 
and I, that's why I think what we're learning today should be sufficient. You can explore some of the additional options, but we're just going to focus on the basic functionality. So is it required? And then, uh, you know, maybe the length, but that's the extent of what we're going to play with. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And uh, as before, I have included our starter files, but you should download them and get familiar with them. And they will be formvile.css <coughs> and formvile.html in week 10. And um, formvile.js is provided here, but I would like us to hand code it together. So don't, you know, don't, don't download it, just use it as a reference. It's, we're going to hand code the example. Okay, so go ahead and download formvile.js. Nice music. <laughs> and uh, formval.css. But not JS. No, because we're going to create it. So my hope is that you can code through it, otherwise, if you're just looking at it, you want to have the same learning experience. And let's open it um, in brackets. So formval.html. And let's look at it together. There is nothing surprising here. We need to add the jQuery scripts. You run, run the form to take a look at it. <coughs> Here's what the form looks like. <laughs> and the CSS, again, pretty basic. Maybe take a moment to look through it if you like. But the CSS is strictly just for styling, so it doesn't really have to do anything with what we'll be doing next. So I'll give you a moment to set up, and then the next step would be for us to add our jQuery scripts. Is everyone set up at this point? Should we have imported the um, jQuery? Well, let's do this together. I was, I was waiting for you, but I guess you're waiting for me. So what we need to add here, I have ma made a comment, add the needed jQuery scripts, which is the first script we need to add here, always. Just import the jQuery library. We need to get the jQuery library. So we all know how to do this by now. Copy jQuery. And next, what we need is uh, we need the code for the plugin. Right. So for the plugin, we're going to go to their website. And um, if we scroll down, it's going to say download. So we need to download this file. And it will be a zip. 
So download the zip file. So now we should have the unzipped files that come with jQuery validation. And uh, there's a demo here, actually many different demos. So feel free to look through these. There is the source code if you wanted to look at their code. Uh, what we want right now is we want to go in the dist file distribution folder. And what we want is the jQuery validate dot min the minimized version because we're just simply going to use it. We're not we're just using it as it is. So we need to put this file in a place that works with our project. So I'm going to copy it from here in my project folder. Well, I don't think I can because the magnify doesn't seem to work here. So let's see how I can do this. Oh, there is a there's my like, So in the jQuery validation folder, we've got demo this like source test and then three files. Okay. Oh, there you go. Um, okay. So it works, I suppose. Okay, so going to this folder, now I can't see what I'm doing at all, but hopefully you can. Sorry, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I, I understand you have to see what it's just, uh, all right. Um, that's not, we want it to be, okay, so after we downloaded the plugin, we extracted all files, and this is what the folder looks like. And again, I was suggesting you can play with the demos if you like. But for now, we're just going to go in the dist, which stands for distribution. So this is the, these are the files that will be distributed um, to the project. And then in here, there is a, if you recall, the, the file we want is the jQuery validate.min. We want the minimized version because we're going to use it. Um, we might just want to peek at the validate.js just to see what is in it. There will be a lot of code that we are lucky that we don't have to write ourselves. Something is not. Okay, I knew that. Um, so we need to open it with. Um, I'll just open it with Notepad for now. All right, so this is the code for the validation plugin that we'll be using. And it looks really well maintained. Even the copyright is up to date, so that looks very promising. And um, if you want to, go ahead and look through it. It's a pretty big file. But we don't have to be concerned with this code because we just get to use it. So what we want is to, to copy a file jQuery validate.min.js. Does any does everyone remember what is the dot mean meaning? It's a compressed version of spaces. And so let's copy this in our project file. Copy it in your project folder. And I have all of them in the same folder for now, so I'm just putting it here instead of the JS. But as long as you know how to get to this file. Okay, and then we need to include this file. Because I make typos, I'm going to actually just copy it from here so I don't have to type it. 
myself. So here is the name. Is the magnifier still helping or is it not helping at all? Uh, probably not. Probably it not. Okay, so what we need to do now is to go and include this file after jQuery in our HTML. So it's going to be again a script tag in the source we call jQuery validate. I forgot you can just complete in brackets so I don't have to copy anything. And, um, and that's it. And if we wanted to use the additional methods, which we want for this example, the additional methods would need to go after the validate is, you know, they depend upon each other, right? Okay, so we are set up with the files we want, we, we need, and um, probably oh, you can, you know, now you can copy this uh, body before the closing body tag. I'm just going to leave them up here for now. And our file is going to be formval.js. And so the next step in our process will be to code the form value of JS. Did everyone get a chance to look at the uh, HTML for the form? Right, so we have uh, input types for email, for password. First name, last name, state, zip, and then the submit button. And we at some point need to make our uh, success with HTML as well. Okay, so we're now, now going to start a new file, which will be called member or formval, I guess, to keep our formval.js. So this will be our JavaScript file. Did I name it formval? Yes, I did. Okay, so first we're going to, of course, call upon document ready. I'll close it at this time as well. And the ready. And once the document is loaded, we want to give the focus to the field with the ID of email. So that we start here. Next, we're going to call the method from, from the validation plugin. We need to call it on the form field itself. So we call it on the form field, and then it validates all the fields in, on, on the form element. It is going to validate all the fields inside this form element. So that's how it works. So our form, just a reminder here, the form um, has an ID of member form. So this is what we want to be using to call the validate method on, all right? Is everyone clear on this very important point? Okay. So member form and then we call dot validate which comes from the validate plane we just downloaded. And we need to close here. So, sorry, first we need to open it because we have some rules. And then we need to close this before we forget. So close the validate by curly brace, parent and uh, semicolon and validate. So 
So you should be able to actually just call validate on the form and then it's going to do some generic validation, but we're going to add some rules to customize it to a certain extent, okay? Remember how he was showing the different rules that you can add. And um, that's why I have these curly braces because we're going to put some rules inside. And so we say rules on, and then we're going to have rules for the email. And how do we know this? You have to look at the documentation or when you look at the video, that's where this information would come from. Uh, maybe we should go back and revisit the website where he posted the documentation. The rules for email will be two. It's going to be a required. So this is going to be true. So we said it to true. This is the process. And it's going to be of email format. And so we set this to true as well. And then no semicolon after the second rule. Close your curly braces, comma. Why is there no semicolon after that one? Well, this is the rule of the language. So if they, these are like literal objects, and if after the last one, there is no comma. I don't know if it will break it. It might not break it, but it's generally there is no comma and it's the same. When we look at JSON next, there always there is no comment. Okay. Okay, so this is the email. Then we also would like to set the password. And again, we're going to set it to required equals true. And by the way, I made a mistake here, so make sure to correct it, otherwise we have to troubleshoot. This is not a semicolon, this is a comma. All right. Okay. So make sure that after the email Required to is a comma, not the semicolon. Okay, and then for the password is required true, and then there is a field that we can use which is called min length, all lowercase, L E N G T H, and we'll set it to six characters. And you can change this so this gives you a reasonable amount of customization. Is that countercase or is that a small? This is all lowercase and that's coming from his okay. documentation. And we close this as well and then comma. Okay, and actually, um, right, so the next one, so these guys that we're setting for the rules, they're also the ID, so they correspond to the IDs of the form, just to be clear. And the next one is going to be uh, verify. And let me go and show you it in the HTML. So the verify is the password verify label right here, as you can see, with the idea of verify. And we're going to set this to be that it is required, and we're going to set it to equal the password, which is the ID of the previous field, because that's what we want. We want the two to match. Okay. okay. So that's what we're doing now. So we're going to say verify uh, require is true. And the rule is that it's going to equal to, this is a uppercase, equal to password. Is everyone clear what happened on lines 14 through 17 then? You are? Okay. Next, we're going to validate the first name. And all we're asking is that it's um, required. Why am I not getting this? I guess I forgot something. Just give me a second. So, um, okay. So the first name required is true, and that's all we're asking. Again, close, comma. 
We're almost done. A couple more. Then the last name. Required two. Finally, zip. It is required, and there is a new function that you can use for zip or in other, other circumstances where you need to, which is that it's called range length. And this, um, let me just spell this correctly, first of all. Not the range, case. no camel case, and the range length allows you to say this can be in the range of 5 through 10 because they may have just 98136 or 98136 dash 12345 okay so um yeah. uh, did i misspell it range thank you Second. Where's that? Thank you, Paul. Okay, and um, actually, we have to close this curly brace. It's supposed to be a comma after the last bracket. Yes. Oh, really? Oh, after the last bracket, because it doesn't below it. Um, It's probably a typo, so let's take it out and um, save all. Oh, this is the rule. Okay, so this is closing the rules, and then we're closing the validate function and the ready function. And now we can save all and test it and see if this is going to work or not. And we have to do this from the... Oh, we have to create our success as well, but we'll do this in a second. So now, okay, so this looks promising. And note that the way this is set up is that the reset doesn't work unless you have something typed in. So what would you like me to do now? I need to create a success with HTML. Do you want me to give you a couple moments to finish maybe the JavaScript file before we continue? Okay, let's do that. So this is much easier, would you say? Or? The JavaScript was with the text there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So once this is done, we should be able to add a success HTML and then test it. Um, when we put 5-10, we got a error. <coughs> it's trying to do subtraction. Um, Negative 5. Oh, it's a comma, I think. Comma, yeah. Yeah. That's my bad. So, yeah, this should be, oh, I guess I was subconsciously thinking about the regular expressions. So, this, sorry about that, it should be 5, 10. That's right. Thank you. Oh. Oh, 
Oh, no, it's not. So I'm going to add a file, success. What do you name this? Success.html. Now let's test it with the group. Okay, so it has to be an email address. So there are many different tests you can do. I'm just going to first test that it goes through. Um, I don't email. It doesn't matter. Okay, it just has to follow the format. At least six characters. So if you wanted to tell the user, you have to have six characters, and they have to be a mix of alphanumeric and lowercase and special characters. What would you have to use at this point? Can you tell me? Yes, you can say it out loud. Well, you need to use regular expressions if you wanted to tell the user that there is a specific combination of characters they need to use. Right now, we're just telling them you have to have six that match, right? And then for here, this one is the name. And for the state, we wanted it to have two. And as you can see, it doesn't care what they are. We're just verifying the number. And I guess I haven't fixed this yet. We are, uh, all right, so let me... I thought I fixed it, maybe I didn't save it. So there are the two guys discovered, so I have to do this again. Is it working for all of you or some of you? Not yet? Okay, so we have to work through it. It will take some time. And if it is working for you, you have a couple options. You can look at some of the documentation to figure out what else the phone plugin can do, or you can continue researching the regular expressions topic. Okay. So I'm going to make sure this one runs here, and then I will come around and see. Yeah, you probably didn't get it, or maybe it's not in the right place. Okay, so this form submits, so this code uh, should be functional. And let me take a look. Maybe Alex, Alex is, yeah. uh, When you bring up the form, do you automatically have those like error messages? Or? Only if you try to submit. Only. Okay. So okay. if you're not submitting, it's not, okay. you should not really do that. That's but, but UI. Uh, yeah, because uh, if you look at the, we have only set the length for yes. the not, that's what I was saying. Yes. If you wanted to do that, you can find out. Um, but right now, I'm just using the But still, I guess I just want to point out. In my opinion, this is a very easy way to get a pretty decent 
get on validation in a, an amazing way. Right? So I think that's a high impact. Alex? So the document uh, that has a rules object. Uh, we will identify the rule as the name of the ID as the name of the ID. It looks like because all, all the email password verified, all the rules are verified. But there's a way that you can use these password rules based on that. Uh, yeah. 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 I don't know if it's like all the time. 
Oh, I guess, uh, okay, so I do need to have a state, but that's not we're taking up. Okay, two, thank you. Um, all right. So, what's wrong right now is that this uh, plugin isn't working for us. Who is you? Is for you? I'll take a look. Range, land. There's no showing. There's no errors. Okay, so let's go. Yeah, I'll get to look at this. Oh, yeah, I think that's for everybody. No, it's not. No, it's not for everybody. There. Raise your hand. Oh, yes. Some of you, it's working for you, right? For some of you guys? Okay. Okay, so if it's working, I guess you're, it's time to go, in fact, for all of us, because we have to go to the next class. So we have to do the same thing as last time. Bring your file on Wednesday, and we'll start with wrapping up this project, make sure it's working for everyone, and we'll go from there, okay? I do have to go, because last time I was late for my other class. Okay. Stuff, so. Yeah, Alex, make sure to bring your code. Yeah, but obviously. Yeah, that's working. That's working. Um, I don't know if your form values are working, make sure to bring it next time. Sorry, I gotta go.